Every time it seems like this show is as good as it can possibly be, as good as any TV program ever could be, somehow it gets even better. Tonight, just as it appeared that the path forward was obvious, a fun bombshell from early in the series became incredibly serious, and returned to bite that theory in the bum, change the course of the game, and throw everything up in the air. First though, Charlie was murdered, because Harry reasoned that it would make everyone suspect her best friend Charlotte, double bluff style, which it absolutely did. Throughout the day, yes, everyone suspected everyone, but the whispers of Charlotte's name became louder and louder. Jazz, one of the first, if not the first, to suspect Paul, raised Harry's name for the first time but Zack and Evie shut him down. He is actually really good at spotting traitors, but no one knows that, including him. During the mission, moments pause to appreciate some staggering knitwear, even by Winkleman standards, Harry found a shield, but didn't tell anyone, and luckily only his BFF Millie saw it happen and agreed to keep Stum, because she trusts him so much. Yes, you did read that right. I'm going to use this to my advantage, he said in his confessional, almost rubbing his hands together with glee cartoon villain style. Maybe this is a risky strategy, because once it's revealed, people might think that if he kept that a secret what else is he hiding? Presumably Harry has already thought of this though, because he seems to have thought of everything. When he was alone with Zack and Jazz, Harry confided in him that he had the shield, adding that he really hoped the traitors tried to murder him that night, because then, we can see who is shocked when I turn up to breakfast. Genius. With himself the murder victim Harry would then be free to use the opportunity to recruit another traitor, come on, Andrew doesn't even really count at this point, without arousing suspicion. Cunning. Brilliant. Clever. He is the mega traitor. At this point you had to hand it to him, he deserves to win. He's playing the game better than anyone else. Bravo. The end. The round table came down to a head-to-head -head between Charlotte and Jasmine, with Charlotte going. Harry may not be able to spell her name correctly, Charlotte, but he succeeded in getting rid of her just as he planned. Later he decided to recruit Ross, while Andrew nodded along like the Churchill dog. He can be a scapegoat, said Harry. Scapegoat, laughed Andrew, the OG scapegoat. Ross had wanted to be a faithful until the end, but then worked out that he'd get murdered if he refused the traitor's offer, so, if you can't beat, M, join, M. When Ross saw it was Harry and Andrew, you two crafty BXXXXDS, he fell straight into traitor's step and agreed that Jasmine would be easy to get out tomorrow. And just when it seemed clear what was going to happen, Ross threw a sly curveball. I want to know the reasons behind different murders, he said, grinning like he was super amused by how well they were doing. When asked who, he paused for probably as long as he could bear, then said, Diane. Harry, slightly drunk on power, couldn't wait to fill him in. She was getting too brave so we put her in her place, he announced, full of bravado and pride. And just like that, the tables were turned. Harry is aware of everything, plans for anything, always thinks two steps ahead. But there is just one thing that he doesn't know, isn't there? One thing he couldn't possibly have planned for. He has absolutely no idea that he murdered Ross's mum, and just gloated to him about doing it. I will take revenge, vowed Ross. It's official, next Wednesday is over 3 million years away.